Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back. This video, I'm gonna be telling you guys how to iterate through an array, but not just a single one dimensional array. We're actually gonna be talking about two dimensional arrays, or in this situation, we don't have a nice square structure. We actually have a jagged array, and it's going to work pretty much the same way. So hopefully you guys are excited, and yeah, let's get started. Pramp is a free mock interview platform where you can develop your technical interviewing skills. Practice coding with live execution of all major programming languages to solve real interview questions. Interview types include data structures and algorithms, product management, behavioral interviews, system design, front end, and data science. I've personally used this service to successfully crash course for a software engineering interview. Lots of people are having success getting positions at companies like Amazon, Google, Twitter, and more. Check it out, I'll leave a link for you guys in the description. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is just take a minute to talk about some of the tools we're going to use when iterating through this. And the first one of those is actually going to be grades.length. So let's run this and see what we get. Three, we can use this value to dynamically iterate through the array without going out of the bounds, assuming we got our loop conditions all correct. But there's actually another length we should know about. Let's check it out. What we're gonna do is we're gonna say grades and instead of just putting dot length, we're actually going to say grades and then throw an index in here such as zero dot length. Let's see what we get here. You can see we also get three, but the reason we're getting three is because we passed in that zero index and it's actually checking how many elements are in this array right here. So if we passed in index one, we're actually going to get a different value. You can see we get the value seven. That's because this array has seven elements. So these are two things we're going to need to use inside of our loop. So let's just create a for loop. And pretty soon we'll be talking about another type of loop you can use. But for now, this will do. We're going to need two for loops when we're working with a 2D structure like this one. And here's what we're going to do for the outer for loop. We're going to say int i is equal to zero, i less than grades dot length, i plus plus. And then for the inner for loop, we're going to say int k is equal to zero, k less than grades dot length and then k plus plus now the index we're going to pass in well we can actually reference which row we're on by using the i so the first time it's going to be zero which would be this one then the next time one and then the next time two and so forth so just pass in i here and then what we can do here is just say sys out and pass in grades index i index k so that is the entire process. Let's run this, see what we get. Obviously everything's gonna be out on a new line, but let's just see if we get the right order. So the three and the seven, those come from right here. I'll just comment those out, because we're not gonna be using those right now. And then we start at the beginning. So we got one, five, three, eight, four, and you can see it follows that same pattern down here. So it seems like it's going in the appropriate order. Now, if you want to make it more like this structure here, you just need to do a little bit of formatting. First, you can change it from print line to print and throw in a space here. And then after the inner for loop, we can just sys out a blank line here. So run this and you can see we get that exact structure. If this is really confusing to you guys, it might be easier if you switched up the variable names to more accurately describe what we're talking about. So for example, I could be renamed to row. And if you want a cool way to do this, you can right click I and click refactor and then rename. What are we gonna rename it to? We're gonna rename it to row. And you can see that's gonna change all instances of it here. We can do the same thing with K. And this one's gonna be column. So there you go.